Hello, welcome to chapter 6. We've moved on to continuous probability distributions. When you watched that bridging video from chapter 5 to chapter 6, you can see how discrete binomial probability distributions become normal distributions. But our first look in chapter 6 is at uniform distributions. There's many reasons for doing this, and the biggest is to introduce the idea that an area is a probability. So if that sounds very geometrical to you, that's right. We are going to be computing areas. Now when we move on to the normal curve, we're going to have our calculator do a lot of that work for us. If you have a situation where the probability is always the same, then this is known as a uniform distribution. An example would be waiting for a train. The trains on the blue and the green lines for the RTA in Cleveland, Ohio, have a waiting time during the peak period of 10 minutes. A train comes through every 10 minutes. If you're waiting for a train, you have to wait anywhere from 0 minutes to 10 minutes. Your probability of having to wait any number of minutes in that interval is the same. Now, of course, this is assuming that you're not referring to a timetable, that you don't notice all the clues around you. It's actually fairly clear when a train's just come through, there's no one on the platform. In a situation like that, you would slow down, you could buy something, a snack, or pick up a newspaper. If there were a lot of people on the platform, you'd probably put that off. You'd probably hustle a little bit thinking, well, there's probably a train coming through. So in a sense, this is not very realistic in terms of actually waiting for a particular train at a particular time. There's so many clues. But regardless, this is a perfect example of a uniform distribution. So let's take a look at this. So here are the waiting times from zero minutes, right when you arrive right at the platform when the door opens. It's amazing how often that happens. To 10 minutes, you arrive right at the platform, right as the doors close, and you have to wait for the next train 10 minutes later. Now, notice that that's fairly straightforward. The waiting time is zero to 10 minutes. But notice that the area has to be one. Remember, we're defining the area to be the probability. If something is 10 wide and its area has to be 1, then its height is 1 tenth. Now, that's not because every uniform distribution has a height of 1 tenth. That's because this uniform distribution is 10 wide. If the trains came every 12 minutes, the height would have to be 1 twelfth. If the trains came every 5 minutes, the height would have to be 1 fifth so that together that gives us an area of 1. Here is that same uniform distribution, except now we're interested in the probability that we have to wait between 5 and 10 minutes. So here, notice the notation, p of the interval 5 to 10. Everything else is the same, but notice that we've only shaded from 5 to 10 minutes, that is half the rectangle. What's the probability that we wait? between 5 and 10 minutes, 1 half, 50%. Now, notice that this does not reverse engineer. If I tell you that the probability of a particular interval is 50%, there's lots of intervals that have a probability of 50%. In other words, the probability of waiting between 0 and 5 minutes is also 50%. So you can't go backwards from the probability to the interval. But you look at the area swept out by the interval, and that tells you the probability. So the first question is, uh, this is still about the blue and green lines, it says to state the random variable. So here the random variable is how long we're waiting. The random variable x is the number of minutes we wait for the train. Now we want to find the probability of waiting between 4 and 6 minutes. Well, 4 to 5 to 6, that's 2 wide, and of course the probability distribution is a tenth high, 0.1 high, so 20%. And that's because between 4 and 6 minutes is 20% of the interval. So let's do a few more of these, uh, maybe a little bit quicker. What is the probability that you wait between 3 and 7 minutes? So we're interested in the probability that our random variable x is between 3 and 7. 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7. You can look at the illustration or you can count it out. 
that's 4 times the height of a tenth is 4 tenths. Find the probability that you have to wait between 0 and 10 minutes. Now this is a reminder that when you create the uniform distribution, when you see that the probability of each of those waiting times is the same, that you have to make the height such that the entire interval gives you all the possibilities, and that is 100%. In other words, it's certain you're going to wait between 0 and 10 minutes, because there's no way to wait less than 0 minutes, and there's no reason to wait more than 10 minutes. I guess except if a train came through full. We've all had that experience. Not that long ago, the 82 and the number 1 were arriving at AR full. They didn't have any more room. This last question is very philosophical and reminds us that we really are talking about an area. So if I ask you for the probability of waiting exactly five minutes, now that's no longer an interval. That's a single uh, line segment. And there's no way that you could wait exactly five minutes. So the probability of this is zero. And that's because of the exactly. There's no width there to give us any area. So why do we study uniform distributions? First off, computers generate numbers in an interval very easily. So we can model a lot of things just by creating random numbers in an interval. A lot of what I'm doing when I'm studying transfers and things like that and flow through a uh, freight system or a passenger transport system is looking at random connections and how likely they are given certain circumstances. But more importantly, this introduces the idea that probability is an area under a curve. And so let's see that word area there, the area under the curve. Now, that is humongous, right? That's where we saw the transition from discrete binomial distributions to the normal distribution. And the idea of taking the area under that curve is huge. And we've seen that now with this uniform distribution. You can call these toy problems, but it's amazing how often these problems are pretty true to real life. And then, of course, we can add them up like we did with rolling two die. And if you roll two, you get a completely distri different distribution. If rolling one die gives you equally likely probabilities of getting between one and six, rolling two, you start to get that binomial probability distribution and that idea that you're heading towards a normal curve. That completes six one, 